Bruce Feldman joining me here from Fox Sports and FoxSports.com from the world of college football. Good to see you in person again, sir. Good to be here. It's an easy road trip for me. I love it. Just up the road from you. So, um, Planet Baylor, uh, on what, what, what atmosphere does Planet Baylor uh, reside right now? The one that has no leadership right now. I mean, it has no leadership. Uh, it's really bad at crisis management. The, after they have their finding of facts that they put out, which is basically a synopsis of the presentation, this investigative firm had spent nine months. Uh, Pepper making, Martin in Pepper Philadelphia. Hamilton. Pe Pepper, Pepper Hamilton, Hamilton. Yes. right. Uh, Pepper Martin, my gosh. Pepper Hamilton in, in Philadelphia, right? Yes. And okay. then after that, uh, so they kind of give this synopsis. They do not name anybody in the 13-page 13, 13 document that they released, but they did uh, talk about the culture of Baylor football, and how it put a, at risk the safe, safety of the campus mm -hmm. and the integrity of the university. Uh, that's on Art Browse's watch. Obviously, Art Browse is the most successful coach they've ever had there. He was at the top of his game. For them to fire him, now remember, they, this group had, had overseen, had looked over over a million pages of documents, done 65 interviews, spent a long time, and these are two women investigators who were former prosecutors. So they, they know what they're doing in terms of investigation. There are also subsequent lawsuits that have been going on, so there's other discovery and things that are coming out of that. So they didn't just fire Art Bryles because they're afraid of the meteor because it was getting ugly. They knew that they were in a really ugly position. So there's something that, that is actually documented, that Art Bryles did something fireable well, these are somewhere. Also because my question for you is, is it true that the Pepper Hamilton report was delivered orally it to Baylor? It is true. So now, there is no actual written report that can be released to yeah. the public, even if they had the stomach for it. A couple of things to keep in mind. Because of FERPA laws, there is a lot of worry about whether they spoke to victims who would not want their names out there, and they'd be in fear that some of that stuff could get out. I think there was a lot of lot of things that, that Baylor was trying to be sensitive to. Now, I also think they were being very sensitive. And I guess this is standard operating procedure when it comes to executive meetings. But they weren't even taking notes when this, when this presentation was made to them. And part of that is because what? there are lawsuits coming. So they, didn't, so they didn't even write this stuff down? No, Whoever, no. So who now, they have the documentation. The there. Board of Regents does. Okay. But they're all this, you know, like I said, you know, a million pages of documents. They have some of this record, they have some of these testimonies. So there's something that can't be disseminated to some boosters who might be putting pressure. Or can't get out there, yeah, because of their worried about litigation down the road. I mean, it's a very messy, very messy side of this all, I think. And you got to remember that. There are more lawsuits coming. I think Baylor is, you know, has already settled some. They're going to have to probably settle more. Uh, you know, there's been. I would not all be surprised from what I've heard from the people I've talked to that there could be more allegations that that come forth. Will we find out what Art Browse knew and when we when he knew it and what happened and who was actually? Because at this point in time, the the fact that his assistants are all still sitting there on Jim Grobe's staff. How, how is that allowed to stand? How is this not being discussed and or rooted out to try and figure out if there are some people on the staff at Baylor right now who still are there after what they did to bring this Pepper Hamilton report to bear? No question. I mean, look, I, I talked to a victim's family member last night. And I said, what did you think about this that they're actually having discussions. And these are big money Baylor people. One was a former chairman of the board who's in his 80s, who talked about they want Art Bryles back. Talk about having your head in the sand. These, that's what, there's been the discussion. There were reports earlier in the week that there might be a vote taken about whether they bring Art Bryles back. And I said, what do you make of this? And this person said, you know, it's unbelievable to me given what we know and what these people, you know, have direct knowledge of. And, you know, he said, on one hand, it really surprises me because this is a, a university that's in crisis mode and has to worry, should have to worry about her image. On the other hand, it doesn't surprise me at all because I saw what they did and I saw how they handled our family's situation. And he goes, these are low down conniving people. And he really, you know, crushed Baylor in his comments to me last night. And I think one of the points he made is, you know, I look at it and I see 
their staff is still there, and this person knows of some some duplicitous behavior from guys people who are, are currently on the staff. For still Jim on Grove. the staff. Still on the staff. So and now they did they did let go of a couple of off field staffers. Who was one was Art Briles' right hand man who'd come with him from the University of Houston when Briles got the job. There was another longtime staffer. Uh, we know the AD is no longer there. We know Ken Starr is gone. But there was a lot of assistants that have some knowledge of some really awful, you know, actions and allegations. And remember, this was a university that was so, so screwed up in that it didn't have a Title IX office for three years past it was federally mandated. I mean, they just were kind of in their own orbit and letting these guys handle it. I mean, one of those things that's mentioned in the, in the finding of facts, and I don't know if people had glossed over it, somebody had, you know, who I talked to a lot about this case had pointed out, you know, there's a reference to a gang rape in there. I mean, there is a lot of really damning stuff. And the fact that you could ask somebody, say, well, if Art Browse knew nothing of all this stuff that goes on, that's as much reason for him to be fired as him, as him knowing this and looking the other way. Bruce Feldman of Fox Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So do we know, have, have the regents, regents held a vote? Do we know if they did? They did not hold a vote on Monday night. Why, do we, why did they not? Do you think they're just tabling according, it? Just you know, according to the interim president, and you got to remember, there's, like I said, there is no leadership really there. It is swimming in, in kind of uncertainty. I think a lot of them are making it up as they go along. I think that they, the, according to the, what, the, um, what the interim president said the other night is, they were kind of caught off guard that, that it, this kind of discourse had been pushed so far out into the mainstream. I mean, my, my hunch is that at some point that, they, that there has to be some sanity and they'll have to sort out, okay, here's what we owe Art Browse. Was he fired for cause? You know, I don't know what's in his contract. It's a private school. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to figure out that settlement. And, you know, but at the end of the day, for people who are going, well, uh, and this is not a knock on Jim Grobe. I, I think Jim Grobe, he used to be on the NCA's or AFCA's uh, ethics committee, did a really good job at Wake Forest. He's in a really big mess of a situation. The guy who hired him, Grant Taft, is kind of like the godfather of Baylor football. He's also like the godfather of the of Football Coaches Association. Mm -hmm. So it's really messy on a lot of different levels. You have recruits. I mean, I've talked to a few of them whose families, they do not want to go to Baylor. They've already signed there. Baylor will not release them. And so, you know, one of the kids' parents I talked to said, you know, we have, I think now it's 12 days left while Baylor has to, has to have some kind of action for them or they're going to block this appeal. They haven't released them. And so he's like, my son doesn't want anything to do with Baylor. He just wants to start someplace else. He can't be recruited anywhere. He can't go to start summer school someplace else. Well, it just else. seems to me that there's some still some struggle some moral struggle about what's more important, cleaning up this mess and standing for what they say this school stands for and what higher education stands for, or football. Would that be a fair no question. assessment? No of question. I mean, I made the case that Baylor had sold its soul to be relevant at, at college football because they'd been so bad for so long. And Art Bryles was there. They took a bunch of second chance kids. And it's one thing to take the second chance kids. It's another thing where they have third and fourth chances and you are determining the justice system of, you know, okay, this sounds plausible, this doesn't. I mean, there are other schools that have had scandals and taken bad, bad character guys who screwed up. But those kids, when they've gotten in trouble, have been kicked off the team and the courts deal with them. Baylor has had this really, you know, in the dark handling of a lot of stuff that was very, very dubious. And again, you know, I got this this call from a coach yesterday who goes, I can't believe this. Where's the NCAA? Yeah, I was going to add, where, where, where is the NCAA in all this? You know, the NCAA is so undermanned of what they're doing. I mean, they've got... How is that possible with billions of dollars funneling in here? They don't, they don't have billions of dollars handling the investigation side of it. They do not want to go down that road that they went down uh, with the Penn State case. Remember, they walked that back afterwards. Now, I'd argue these are very different cases. Now, the, there's, the crimes are horrific. The Penn State case, as ugly as it was, did not involve any current players. And the assistant coaches, it wasn't like widespread in the program. It was Jerry Sandusky, you know, after he had left the program. Who knew what definitely is, is, a, is a thorny issue for them. In this case, it is very active in that you have players who are on the team and players who are teammates of these guys who are alleged to have committed some very horrible acts. The coaching staff uh, at, may have been duplicit in this. Duplicit is, at the very least, they are complicit in how they how they have, may have handled some of this. And where the NCA, the only thing they could get at this would be, was it an extra benefit? 
Was it an extra benefit that because you were a football player, you got a favorable treatment in the justice system for this? And I know from speaking to people at the NCA, they're very uncomfortable with the idea of calling this an extra yeah, benefit. Of course. Because it, it's... Well, how about let's just stop playing semantics and let's just play uh, oversight. Play the role that you are supposed to play, which is to go in and try and make sense of a mess and clean it up for an organization and an institution that has no ability to do it themselves. Isn't that what the NCAA is there for? Who knows what they're really there for at this point? I mean, that's the question at, at this point is, what kind, are they a justice system? Are they going to handle it? The NCA, by the way, the Department of Education is going to look at this. The, the federal government. The federal government. And what happens if, if they find, you know, Baylor was in the wrong here, Baylor could lose federal funding, which is a significant step. The thing that should be pointed out is that could take five years for that investigation. That's how those investigations usually take four or five years. They're even slower than the NCA is to getting around at some of this stuff. So all these factors, I think, have to be considered. Look, the Big 12 hasn't really given any comments on this either. And I think if, if, you, if the school somehow and the rich boosters override what would seem like common sense, because Baylor didn't just fire the most successful coach they've ever had for no reason. You know, they clearly had. Now, what the, what the general public knows, what some Baylor you know, uh, alums know, is different. You know, but they're not seeing the court testimony or some of the statements from some of the victims who've come forward. I mean, that's something defense attorneys know, though. So let me just sum it all up, if I can. An independent investigative unit wrote up a 13-page nameless They report. did not write it up. They made a presentation. They made a presentation. The board did a synopsis okay. of it from there. And, and either redacted the names or didn't get any names. Okay. Chose not to make those names. Right. Public. And then the rest of that report was delivered orally to a group of regents that purposely took no notes so it could not be used potentially against them in a potential lawsuit. They go ahead and, from what they heard, fired the coach, suspended the athletic director, who eventually resigned. Yeah, forced him out. They, they, they knocked down Ken Starr from president and chancellor to just uh, chancellor, and then he eventually resigned from that post and no, gave he's... two absurdly embarrassing interviews, one in which a local television station showed him changing his answer to the very simple question of, did you receive an email from a victim saying, I was raped, changed it three different times. While his PR woman was, was kind of like right. looking over him like the mother of the And place. now there's all a bunch of rich boosters putting pressure on the Board of Regents to actually bring Art Bryles back after a year and the NCAA is nowhere to be found. Have I missed anything right now? That is the current state no, of the No, one other city. interesting point here, though. On Friday, the school announced that it was going to have a task force, and it was taking 105 steps, recommendations that Pepper Hamilton had made. And Pepper Hamilton has done this at other, yes. other schools. Maybe not 105, but they go and do policy audits of different schools who have had some kind of problem with sexual assault cases like this. They took 105 rec uh, recommendations, created a task force. That's what they announced. I would guarantee you that none of those 105 steps said anything about bring Art Bryles back. Disgusting that, that, that they're being pressured by a group of people, though, I believe, took out a full-page ad in uh, well, the Austin yeah. newspaper. And I think the Waco Tribune, too. And started a, a, a website to essentially, what, free Ken Starr? Yeah, uh, they were thanking Ken Starr thank for his him. great treatment. Oh, because yeah, just... so he's, he's so great. He's so great, as opposed to being an absolute disgusting hypocrite of an individual. There's no yeah. other way to put it. Yeah, I mean, look, it was embarrassing. I, I mean, almost think it was his own reward that, you know, the local TV tape where he looks completely like a buffoon clueless. with that woman uh, trying and to suppose help it, and, and a guy who once testified in front of Congress, a former independent prosecutor. It's, it's remarkable that How? he was one of the highest level prosecutors in the United States and is a figure of history and looked, looked and, that And now pathetic. he needs to be coached? 60 seconds, we're back with more here with Bruce Feldman. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll attempt to go onto the football field, although virtual gridiron sports are now apparently going to be a thing. That's what I hear. In college. That's next here on The Rich Eisen Show. Bruce Feldman of Fox Sports College Football right here on The Rich Eisen Show. So uh, the, the folks who took out the full-page ad to, say, to thank Ken Starr, because he's done such a super job for Baylor, um, are they the same people that are pressuring the Board of Regents right now to bring out our uh, you problems, know, as best the, you can tell? The only names that I knew of was, I think one was like a former mayor of Waco's family. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the people who was outspoken in this was a, a, was a minority owner of the Range, Texas Rangers. Another one is a former chairman of the board there. And then some of the other ones, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know their, their names on, on that. But there's definitely been 
a lot of chatter about it, and it's just kind of a head scratcher. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of talking in the break. You hear in politics how you know donations to PACs is what is what kind of sways votes. Do you see a situation where they will ever put a limit on what boosters can donate? Because that's where all the power seems to come from. You have, you know, obviously powerful boosters there at Baylor, the minority owner of the Rangers, T. Boone Pickens at o Oklahoma State. Or maybe they can just create a super PAC where it doesn't matter, just like in politics. But, but, they, there, but the in best... terms of individual donations, could mm -hmm. there ever be something like that? Where... No, I don't think the university's ever wanted. I mean, you know, T. Boone Pickens at, at Oklahoma State. You know the guy. You know every SEC bon every every SEC powerhouse has some huge booster who is like a god figure there. You know, look. I mean, your alma mater has uh, Stephen Ross, Ross who is, is everywhere. Yeah, on that worth campus. a fortune. And what they, you know, what they can do, how they help uh, coaches travel on planes through recruiting. Uh, you know, Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx. He's like a godfather to a handful of schools. I mean, the academic building at Ole Miss for football players or for athletes is is for him. I think there's different schools. So there's all these, all these guys. I don't know if you want to call them sugar daddies necessarily, but oh, every powerhouse program has something and like that. And what's going on with Ole Miss? Anything there? I mean, we got to wait and see if if there's more to, not just more to the Tunsil draft night stuff, yeah. but if some of the allegations that get thrown around and some of the innuendo stuff, can the NCAA substantiate any of that? You know, because right now it's, it's more, you know, a lot of finger pointing. I think if what Ole Miss gets hit with, you know, they're going to self-sanction, I think, 11 scholarships in four years, that's not a lot. So I think the NCAA, you know, there's some pressure on them to, to look at that more aggressively, but we'll see. It's, it's very hard for them to, to, to nail schools. Do you think we're gonna, ever going to find out who did Tunsil? Like that on draft night? Do you think we're going to find that one out? Or are you I do hearing think whispers? So. I do think so. Do you know who it is, but you don't have it locked down right now? Are you hearing what the whispers are? Uh, right there was somebody you told me about. It. Now, this person, the name didn't mean anything to me. For mm -hmm. people who, who cover NFL, you know, they know, I'm sure they know who it is. Because I, when I heard this name, it didn't mean anything to me. Because I don't college? deal with a lot of, I don't deal with a lot of player agents. I just don't, you know, the, you know, the fact that this was. Oh, a, so it, it, it was a name of an agent? It was somebody who's affiliated with an agent. That's that was what I understood. Bruce Feldman is here. So, are we going to get esports scholarships and esports and big, big uh, conferences like the Pac-12 is going to start doing some competitions this year with esports? You know, the Pac-12 needs to just worry about the Pac-12 and getting their own network into more homes. We live in Los Angeles, and I feel like the Pac-12 network spends so much energy worrying about what's not here. And what's not what they don't have, as opposed to all the other stuff about you know they 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 pull their hamstring to try to be innovative and don't do the stuff that the the, the SEC, basics the yeah. basics. I mean, look, the two biggest conferences are the SEC and the Big Ten, and they've done a really good job of of defining themselves and catering to their fan base, which are rabid. The Pac-12s, you know, it's just different out here. You know this, you live out here. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea that this would be something that they would be engaging in, it's just a head scratcher. It just To me, it just seems like it's, it's just off base. Yeah, I guess Robert Morris became the first university in 2014 to offer a gaming scholarship. So, well, it, so is I that sending you to Karapolis, uh, Karapolis, Pennsylvania? I think what we're going to do is, <laughs> I think, I think Zan, Zan is going to get a Wii. Right? <laughs> and, just Xbox, and then just Stanford, work. Stanford, here he comes. If yeah, you're going right? to put it under a sports umbrella, though, does, does, this brings up the question of, are you going to drug test? Because at a lot of these yeah. things, Adderall is a huge well, problem. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good they point. They play 20 straight hours. Are you going to oh limit practice time? Because student athletes have limits on practice time. My head time. just exploded. They can't, you know, that's is there, By the way, is there a study hall for eSports? That's right. The mandatory study hall for freshmen. But, you college. know, I just kind of ties. 20 hours a week. Ties into this. Nick Saban, you know, went on a mini rant a couple of weeks ago about how they really drug test the four teams that make the playoffs. You're almost at a disadvantage uh, to make the playoffs from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I just think they don't have a great uh, grasp on the landscape they're dealing with. And the point you're talking about sounds like a joke, but it's really one of the things that they would have to wade in when we're talking about what other sports and, and scholarships and other sports are getting dropped, and their schools are dropping wrestling here and there, and they're yeah, dropping other sports, and now they're going down this business. road. They're going down this road. So what we should do is Michigan should start some sort of e-sports program and then hold satellite camps all across the United States, <laughs> bringing their own consoles, bringing their own uh, high-definition screens. What jersey screens. would he wear for that? I don't know. 
How about this guy who won last night? Who won last night? What is this all about? This guy Some won last night? Some nickname guy. His nickname was Stiff. No, it was not. Yeah, no, it was. D d does he have a, a hot mom? Or I just think like, it... Just like American <laughs> Pie? Uh, yeah, no, the announcer, the color guy was calling him the Stiff Meister. No, Look, he did. Watching he was not, this last that night... Was not, that was not happening last it night. Absolutely it? happened. It was almost as bad as the hot dog eating contest. Uh, though, talking uh, about... Uh, the, now, hold on a minute. That is hollow ground here on the Rich Eisen Show. The grit and determination of these <laughs> gamers and the blood, sweat, and tears and the, the late hour, the late nights... Do you have some of the quotes of the, the champion? Do you have some of the quotes uh, of the... I'll pull uh, it up. The late nights and early mornings and the red in his eyes at work. This was on the worldwide leader in sports. Uh, you know, this our part makes our me feel our very, very old. When, because I just don't have yeah. any grasp of this. I mean, of why people care about watching this. Like, I'd rather have people talk about their own fantasy teams or the bad know, beats in poker. The, it's like a poker bad beat. Or, yeah. yeah, I have a oh, buddy. You guess, you'll never guess what happened to me on the river. Yeah, I don't. Wanna, I don't want to care about what my buddy did on the on the par three, you know, yesterday or whatever. Like, I just don't want to hear about other people's like hobbies. Yeah, he won last night. And what what my one of my favorite quotes? Do you have him up there, Brock? I have some of the quotes. Yeah, my family supports me. My soon-to-be fiance soon supports me a thousand was, percent. Was he breaking news? So about to his to his. To his I, I, girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. So he hasn't Soon? yet proposed? Is that what he's saying? Like, how much money are these guys making? Is this like DJs in Europe who make, I think make it was a 50 stunning grand? amount of was money? It, was I think it was 50 grand. Yeah, they said uh, next year's NFL 17 Madden ch uh, Challenge will have a million dollar prize pool. There you pool. go. Now that's money talks, man. So there's that's going to be serious. Gaming, gaming in general is going to hit a $91.5 billion revenue this year. So that, wow. that is why ESPN is probably getting involved. Why the Pac-12 wants to be involved? But That's a lot of cash. That's a big pie. One point five billion. But I, I just want to know. <laughs> Soon to be <laughs> fiance. <laughs> Honey, I just I'm I'm a gamer, and I just won Madden, and I'm going to K's. <laughs> Where are you gonna go? You just won. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a ring for my soon to be fiance. Soon to be. That's, optimi and, and that's optimism. He, and if he keeps it up, soon to be ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> if she's lucky. When was the last time you played Madden? If she's lucky. Uh, it's Against been a while. you here when Rich was on the road uh, two years ago. Exactly. Two Bruce, years ago. Bruce, thanks for coming in. Please come it. back. Love our conversations. Looks like I've been having. I think I've said that four times today. We've had some great guests today. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.